Incense. Good morning. Is it are we live? Are we on? Yeah. All right. Welcome to the presence of the Lord. We are a bit late again today. Technical technical error. <laughs> Welcome. I know, I know, I know you're you're already fired up you're already fired up and waiting and i am too because in his presence is fullness of joy at his right hand are pleasures forevermore you are most welcome let's get our tools ready tools the bible your notepad and something to write with a pen not a pencil you want to have something solid God told Moses, write it down. Because God knows how feeble our human minds are. The human mind is weak. You will think at that moment, oh yes, I will remember. If I ask you <laughs> five minutes later, you, you start scratching your head. So for your own good, for my own good, we write things down. The paper will not forget. So you can always go and do free consultation. You see? Free, the paper won't charge you for consultation. What did I write down on the 3rd of October 2021? And the paper will show you and you're like, ha, ah, clever paper. All right, so let's carry on. Today's declaration, the word of God that we want to read so that we can pray accordingly is from the book of Hebrews. Let's go to Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 12. That's toward the end of your Bible. It's the New Testament. Okay. Chapter 12. I will read from verse 11 to 17 and we will pick up you when we read it. See, I always read it so that we get the gist, all right? And you see where we are going after I finish reading. Hebrews 12 from 11 to 17. Now, no chastening seems to be joyful for the present, but painful nevertheless. Afterward, it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. Therefore, st strengthen the hands which hang down and the feeble knees and make straight paths for your feet so that when it's lame, may, so that what is lame may not be dislocated but rather be healed. Verse 14, pursue peace with all people and holiness without which no one will see the Lord. Looking carefully, lest anyone fall short of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up cause trouble, and by this many become defiled. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person like Esau, who for one morsel of food sold his birth right. Verse 17. For you know that afterward, when he wanted to inherit the blessing, he was rejected, for he found no place for repentance, though he sought it diligently with tears. May the Lord bless his word, and may the Lord open our hearts, the ears of our hearts, the eyes of our hearts, the minds of our of our spirit being, may we really receive this and speak it into our souls, into our bodies, into our spirit. May the word of God revive us, restore us, correct us, and help us through all our life. In the name of Jesus, let us pray. Father, we come to you by the power of your Holy Spirit in the matchless name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for this Sunday morning. We thank you for this third day of October 2021. 
Father, this is the day that you have made. We have chosen to be joyful. We have chosen to be glad. We have chosen to enjoy this day because you have specially made this day for us, for our good. And so, Lord, we thank you for every word of correction that you are going to speak to us today. You said no chastening seems to be joyful for the present, but painful. Nevertheless, afterward, it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. Lord, we open our ears and we allow you to train us today. Holy Spirit, take control. Take control in our lives. Take control during this service. Take control in our hearts. You are the one who is taking us into the Father's presence by and through and in the blood of Jesus and in the name of Jesus. We approach that throne knowing that it is by grace. We wash ourselves in the blood of Jesus and according to your word, you have justified us, you have sanctified us, you have qualified us to come into your presence, not because of what we've done, but because of what Jesus did on the cross. So, Lord, we thank you for the work of the cross. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for putting your life down for us and picking it up again. Because you live, we live. And by the love of the Father, we are made righteous by your blood and by the Spirit, by the living Spirit. Because those that are born of the flesh are of the flesh, and those that are born of the Spirit are of the Spirit. We thank you that we are spirit beings and we will hear from the spirit this morning for your glory and for our benefit. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Welcome, welcome, saints, to the presence of the Most High God. You know, we always have a lot to cover and two hours is short, such a short time. So let's go. Let's go. Our reading of today is from the epistle of Paul to the Thessalonians. First Thessalonians chapter 5. First Thessalonians chapter 5. I will read from verse 8 to 28. I couldn't shorten it, but we love the scripture. So bear with me. Because that's how we learn. The more we know of the word, the freer we are. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. And the word brings you freedom. That's the, 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 the good news of the gospel. So let's read First Thessalonians chapter 5 from verse 8. It says, but let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and as a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God did not appoint us to wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Verse 11, therefore comfort each other and edify one another just as you also are doing. And we urge you, brethren, to recognize those who labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you. And to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake. Be at peace among yourselves. Now, we exhort you, brethren, warn those who are unruly, comfort the faint-hearted, uphold the weak, be patient with all. See that no one renders evil for evil to anyone, but always pursue what is good, both for yourselves and for all. Verse 16, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit, do not 
despise prophecies. Test all things. Hold fast to what is good. Abstain from every form of evil. Now, may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely and make your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you is faithful, who also will do it. Brethren, pray for us. Greet all the brethren with a holy kiss. I charge you by the Lord that this epistle be read to all the holy brethren. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen, amen, amen. All right. So if you listened well and you have seen the title there on Facebook, we can only stream on Facebook at the moment. It will be uploaded to YouTube later because of the technical faults that I talked about. So if you, uh, according to the title, you can see that we are being admonished. We are being taught. We are being advised. More than an advice, rather a command. Because we read there in, in, in Hebrew that, you know, um, chastening seems... Uh, no, it says no chastening seems to be joyful at the present, but painful. Nevertheless, afterward, it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. So you have to allow the Holy Spirit to train you. And today's training is be there for each other. Be there for one another. God has been there for you. So learn by the help of the Holy Spirit. In your strength, you can do nothing. This, this kind of teaching and expectation is not done in the flesh. A holy, 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 holy God. Paul says we have not been appointed for wrath. He doesn't want you to, to suffer. So he teaches you his ways his holy ways, his perfect ways, he has already paved the way. And he just says, follow me, imitate me, be like me. I have forgiven you, forgive others. I've done everything for you, do the same for others. Be there for each other. This is something we must make up our minds ahead of time on a daily basis to do. You can't just say, oh, I'll, I'll think about, I'll think about it when it comes. No. God is telling you ahead of time so that you can make up your mind ahead of time. We haven't got time to play church these days. You look around you, the world is no more what you knew even two years ago. <laughs> Talk less of five or 10 or 20 years ago. Things are moving really fast. Don't waste your time. Don't keep grudges. Don't despise people. Don't waste your time hating on people. You are actually doing it to yourself. Because God is telling you, be there for each other. You can't say, uh, oh, when I see somebody in trouble, uh, then I'll, I'll decide whether to help them. No, the good Samaritan, when he saw the man that was beaten, he went there. He didn't plan it. It was his, his nature. And the nature of the Pharisees and the priests was to go to the other side, you see? So when it is your nature, you do it without thinking. The nature of the, the Pharisees and, and the priests was to go cross over to the other side so they can touch blood and be defiled. But the nature of the good Samaritan was to go and help. And he even left money and, say, and said to the innkeeper, take care of him. If you spend more than this, when I return, I will 
reimbursing. So this is something we have to know. Jesus did not tell that story so that we can just hear and, and remember the Good Samaritan. That's what you are supposed to be. That should be your nature. That should be my nature. We have to pray ahead of time. Lord, give me a compassionate heart. That's how you start. How, how do I help people? How do I know to help people? When you see, when you pray, Lord, give me a compassionate heart. And then you see somebody in need, the Holy Spirit will draw your heart. Is that why you pray? Lord, give me a compassionate heart. The Holy Spirit will talk at your heart. And you know. I'm not saying you should give money to every beggar on the street. You will know. When you live by the Spirit, you will be led by the Spirit. And God knows those he wants to give. The poor, you will always have. Those are the words of Jesus. So if some people can, you know, will help other poor. You, you will help the poor that God brings in your way. But you have to be proactive ahead of time. Ask him for a compassionate heart. Say, Lord, give me a hearing ear. The world is fallen and broken, like I always say. So there's evil out there. Things you may know, things you may not know. So listen to the Holy Spirit. Lord, give me a hearing ear. Give me a perceiving eye, uh, the eye of my spirit, so that I see what you see, I hear what you are telling me. So that I can reach out to those you have put in my way. In Jesus' name, amen. So that's your prayer. Then, as Jesus says, the extra mile. Go out of your way to remove obstacles from people's ways or in people's ways. Don't see somebody walking towards trouble and you say, Hoo -hoo -hoo, that's their business. Oh, let me just wait to laugh. No. Remove obstacles from people's ways. Don't put obstacles in people's ways. You do it proactively. There are enough agents of Satan out there. Don't be one of them. Make sure you are not one of them. Be there for each other. That's our title, right? And they say, you know, chastisement is not good at the moment. But when you practice it, you will have peace. Your life will be so peaceful. You be you 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 think you are helping others. No, you are helping yourself. You are helping yourself because Jesus says, if you give a cup of water to any one of these, you are doing it for me. Jesus is your master. And that's why you aim to imitate him in every way. He puts down his life for you and I. And so, when you choose Jesus as your master, then you'll be careful not to be the devil's advocate. Don't, don't let the devil use you to make others stumble. Let Jesus use you to lift people up. Because every tree that my heavenly father did not plant will be uprooted. You can think that it's growing. It grows, but it will be uprooted. So we have to choose proactively the side we are on. Be willing and be ready to help people where and however you can by the Spirit of God. Not just for the reward, although I can say be sure that the reward will definitely come. Why? Because you're not doing it to them. You're not doing it for them. You're doing it directly to Jesus. And he is a sure rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So you are not doing it for the reward. But when you do it for Jesus, the reward is sure. In everything we do, 
whether it is giving, whether it is whatever, because your heart is right. Once the heart is right, God sees the heart. So doing it with the aim of receiving the reward is different from doing it knowing that no matter what happens, you'll be rewarded. There's a big difference. So you are not going out because of the reward. You are doing it for Jesus, knowing that he can never. There, there's no time you will lift up a finger for Jesus that you won't be rewarded. So you, 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 you make it your nature to be like Jesus. And of course he sees it all. Remember the, the widow with the might. She gave everything. And I always say, even though it's not written in the Bible, I know Jesus didn't let that woman go home poor. It, it's not written there, but I know it. Because he commended her. He told the disciples, look at these ones. They gave out of their wealth, out of their riches. But this woman gave all. I bet. <laughs> I bet by the time that woman went home, she would have been, her house would have been full. Her life would have changed. God sees everything. Don't, don't be deceived. God sees everything. And there's a reward for everything. Good or bad. Make no mistakes. Be there for each other. Not for what you can gain. But because it's your nature. And because it's your nature, like the good Samaritan, Jesus told that story on purpose. He is a rewarder. And he will reward. It was... Jesus, who, 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 who started the whole story. Whether we wake or sleep, that means whether we, we, we are dead or alive. We are in him. We are alive in him no matter what. Remember what we read. To encourage people, do not discourage them. If it is in the Lord, it is not pep talk. You know, I, I, I say it many times, when, when people want to pump you up, they give you pep talk. And then you are pumped up, pumped up, and then the, you are pumped up on Monday, pumped up on Tuesday, or by Wednesday you start deflating. No. When it is in the Lord, it is not pep talk. It is life-giving. So Monday you are full, Tuesday you are fuller, <laughs> Wednesday you are even fuller, and you continue like that, forward and upwards. Jesus is not somebody that will lift you up today and drop you tomorrow. And that's why he waits for us to come into alignment. That's why he teaches us things like this. So that we can listen, we can learn, we can grow and bear fruit. Peaceful fruit. Let people know that you are genuinely or, or, or looking out for them, that you genuinely love them, that you gen, genuinely care for them. It's not everyone who will accept your love, so don't bother. You owe it to every man to love them. Everyone, you are, you, the people you call friends and the people you call enemies, you owe it to them to love them. So just be genuine about it. And look out for them. Be there for them. Let them know that you are there. See, there are people that when you help them, they mock you, they, they talk you down, they laugh at you. But when they are in trouble, you are the first people they come to. Why? you be asking yourself. <laughs> you know, just a week ago, you were laughing at me. Now you need my help. It's because they know you are genuine. And they were doing that because they, they didn't know better. So you forgive them and still love them and still help them. Your reward is greater. You are shining. That's why they see you. That's why they see you and they come to you. After mocking you a week or two. Remember Jesus? Oh, today Hosanna in the highest. Tomorrow crucify him. That's how human beings are. 
to just carry on and be an imitator of God. Don't say, I am too rich, I'm too poor, I'm, I'm this, I'm that. Just do it. Just do it because Jesus did it. Be there for one another. All right. Let's back it up with the scriptures, as always. Don't want you to, to just sit there and, and look. I want you to listen. I want you to follow me line by line with the scripture and see what we are talking about. So let's go back to... 1 Thessalonians 5 from verse 8. It says, But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and as a helmet, the hope of salvation. So, you are, you, you, you are supposed to be sober. You are supposed to put on faith, hope, and love. Put them on. Let it be your nature. That's the word of God. I summarized it later, earlier. Now we are going it, you know, line by line so that you see it for yourself. Don't say Victoria said. No, the word of God said. It may not feel good now, but if you practice it, if you train yourself, you see that your life will be so peaceful. Those, those haters that, or those mockers, when you, when you see them, you, you even feel sorry for them. You can't hate them. Hate them for what? They don't even know what they are doing. It's like hating a baby. <laughs> How can you hate a baby? What does that baby know? Think about it. Love them. You owe it to them. Because God loves you. And you didn't pay any price for that love. So you can't even do it. So you put on these things. Faith, hope, love, and be sober. Verse 9, for God did not appoint us to wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, that whether we are dead or alive, in every situation, we should live together with him. God already planned what is good for us. He did not appoint us to be destroyed. He did not plan our destruction. He planned what is good for us through Jesus Christ. That's why we must also plan what is good for ourselves and for others through the same Jesus Christ. He is the way, the truth. The life. It's a mindset and God is training you to, to, to put it on. Take it upon yourself. Change your mind. Change your thinking pattern. Oh, he's bad to me, so I'll be, I'll be bad to him. No. No. The opposite. Let your lifestyle conform to the ways of God. It is what God wants, not what you want. Because when you do according to him, then your life is peaceful. Verse, verse 11. So we read 10 already. Jesus died for us, that whether we wake or sleep. So verse 11 says, comfort each other and edify one another just as you also are doing. You see, Paul was already confident that the brethren he was writing to were already living like this. He says, you are already doing it. But I'm reminding you. Because it makes sense to live like this. He was confident in them. And he says, recognize also, verse 12, recognize also those who labor among you and are over you in the Lord. And these are the ones who instruct you, who admonish you, who or warn you or teach you or, or help you or guide you. He says, respect them, care for them, recognize them. 
because they are giving their life for you. He says, be at peace among yourselves. When you live in peace, you send out peace, you receive peace. Be there for each other. Verse 13 says, and to esteem them uh, very highly in love for their work's sake. You see? To realize what others are doing for you and be there for them as well. Verse 14. Now we exhort you, brethren, warn those who are unruly, comfort the faint-hearted, uphold the weak, be patient with all. So whatever part you are playing, play it well. Do it with the love of Jesus in your heart. Warn those troublemakers. Don't say it's none of my business. God might just be putting them in your way to lead them to heaven. To show them the way, to guide them, to admonish them, to talk to them. Yes, there are some children in the same household who are more stubborn than others. They, they eat the same food as their siblings and, and their, their characters are still different. So don't throw one baby out with, with, the, with the bath water. You still have to wash them and keep them and train them and love them. But warn them. Warn them so that they know that that kind of behavior is not acceptable. Let them live a life that will bring them peace. That's what he says. Warn those who are unruly, but comfort the faint-hearted. Those who are weaker, uphold them and be patient with all. Whatever you do, do it well. Do it with the heart of Jesus. Ask Jesus, like I said at the beginning, pray. Father, give me a compassionate heart. You cannot do it on your own. This kind of love and patience that we are talking about, you can't manufacture it. It is God who will put it there in you. Because he wants to live his life out of you. It's no longer I that live, but Christ lives in me, right? Uh -huh, I've been crucified with Christ. Whether I live or die, I live with him. So this is how we die in him and live in him. And verse 15 says, Ha ha, this one is a big one. See that no one renders evil for evil to anyone, but always pursue what is good, both for yourselves. And for all. When you point finger, look at how many ones are pointing back at you. Do not pay back evil for evil. Don't do it. You, the, your flesh may be itching. Oh, I'll, I'll do it back to them. Forget it. Just, just take a deep breath. Calm down. And say, Lord, forgive them. For they know not what they are doing. Just... Show love instead of hatred. Do not pay back evil for evil. Pursue. Pursue what is good. So proactively pursue what is good for yourself and for everyone. Because a lot of people hate themselves. It might surprise you to hear. I know some of you know this. Some people hate themselves because they are dissatisfied with everything around them. But God is telling you, love yourself and love others equally. Just learn to be there for others. If you can do it for yourself, then you'll be able to learn to do it for others when you have a compassionate heart. Okay, I'll show you an example of what I'm talking about. Let's go to the Old Testament. Old Testament, Deuteronomy. Let's see how somebody can be selfless. Deuteronomy chapter 9 from verse 12. 
We're talking about Prophet Moses. It's just a teaching of warning, admonishing today that the lifestyle, something to let you understand what God expects of you, how God expects you to live your life. Not looking at yourself, me, 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 me. But be there for others. Learn to be there for others. We are not saying it will be sh sweet sugar cane all the time. No. But that's the point. You are going the extra mile. Jesus did the same for you and I. So he did it to show us how. And here is Moses. In the Old Testament, you have more grace today. So let's see. Deuteronomy 9, I'll read from verse 12. So, this was, you know, Moses had gone to be with the Lord on the mountain. And of course, the children of Israel were anxious. Oh, where is this Moses? And uh, they started, they asked Aaron to, to build that golden calf for them and all that. But the Lord saw it and told Moses. So here in verse 12, then the Lord said to me, Arise, go down quickly from here. For your people, I love this. Listen to that. God told Moses, your people. For your people whom you brought out of Egypt have acted corruptly. That's what I'm saying. Whatever you do, hide, hide in the deepest, darkest hole if you like. God has seen you already. Just come out plain and say, Lord, I'm sorry. You can't hide from him. Moses was with him on the mountain. And he said, Moses, arise. Your people are doing rubbish down there. They have quickly turned aside. Deuteronomy 9 verse 12. They have quickly turned aside from the way, from the way which I commanded them. This is the whole point of today. What is the way of life that God is commanding you to live? Are you quickly turning away? Think about it. Oh, I used to go to church when I was a child. My mom used to take me to church. Now I'm an adult. I can think. No, that means you, you are worse than what you were when you were a baby. If you talk like that, then you can't think. Then you lost it. God says, go quickly. Or, or go down. They, they have quickly, quickly turned aside from the way which I commanded them. They have made themselves a molded image. This is God talking to Moses. Verse 13. Furthermore, the Lord spoke to me saying, I have seen these people and indeed they are a stiff necked people. Let me alone that I may destroy them and blot out their name from under heaven. And I will make of you a nation mightier and greater than they. So I turned and came down from the mountain. And the mountain burned with fire. And the two tablets of the covenant were in my two hands. Verse 16. And I looked and behold... You have you had sinned against the Lord your God and made for yourselves a modern calf. You had turned aside quickly from the way which the Lord had commanded you. Verse 17. Then I took the two tablets and threw them out of my two hands and broke them before your eyes. And this is where being there for each other comes in. And I fell down before the Lord as at the first. Forty days and forty nights, I neither ate bread nor drank water because of all your sin, which you committed in doing wickedly in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger. Compare that to Thessalonians that it says, esteem those who work hard for you. For he was fasting for their sin. He was there for them. It was his prayer that calmed God's anger on the people. 
He says there in verse 19, Deuteronomy 9, 19. For I was afraid of the anger and hot displeasure f uh, with which the Lord was angry with you to destroy you. But the Lord listened to me at that time also. He interceded on behalf of people who could have been destroyed. And rightly so. Verse 20. And the Lord was very angry with Aaron and would have destroyed him. So I prayed for Aaron also at the same time. Then I took your sin, the calf which you had made, and burned it with fire and crushed it and ground it very small until it was as fine as dust and I threw its dust into the brook that descended from the mountain. So that is the whole point of intercession. Intercession and standing in the gap for others. God told him, your people whom you brought out of Egypt have acted corruptly. And God was looking for who can be there for others. When God said um, in verse 14, Let me alone that I may destroy them and blot out their names from under heaven and, and I will make you a nation mightier and greater than they. Uh, some of us will say, oh, yes, Lord. <laughs> yes, Lord. Let's carry on. Get rid of these stiff necked people. No, that's not what the Lord was looking for. The Lord was looking for somebody to stand in the gap so that he can be merciful. He had already made an everlasting covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He wasn't going to change it. So when you see people in trouble, you don't say, uh, good for them, serve them right. No. You pray to God for them. God help him see. God help her see. Lord, change their heart. Lord, let put them in a situation where they will realize that it is only you they need. Don't write people off. You don't know which one will come out tomorrow and be a blessing to his people or her people. You don't know. You only see the, 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 the rubbish at that moment. No, no, God, just, just think about it. If God say, you know, get rid of them, I'll, I'll, I'll make you greater than them. You say, yes, Lord, let's go. Please, don't make sure you remove obstacles from people's ways. Don't, 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 don't be, um, oh, how do they put it? Forgotten the, the way. When somebody is suffering, you rejoice. Don't, don't, don't be like that. Don't rejoice at somebody's hurt. Don't rejoice at somebody's disaster. Don't rejoice when people are suffering. Look into your heart and ask yourself, how can I help? How It could just be a prayer. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy on them. Have mercy on their soul. Their forefathers sinned. Their fathers sinned. They are just walking in the same road. They don't know differently. Lord, help. That might just be because when it comes from your heart, it touches God's heart because your heart and the heart of Jesus are linked up. That's why I said, pray, Lord, give me a compassionate heart. Give me the heart of Jesus. Paul says we have the mind of Christ. How? To think like him. What would Jesus have done? Just stepped over somebody who is who is fallen? No, he won't step over them. So this is a big lesson for us today to learn. Are you willing to stand in the gap? Or are you just waiting for others to, to, to be destroyed so you can, you know, get their property, get their, you know, just just go and, and, and plunder them? No. 
Moses was sober. That's what we read in Thessalonians. Moses was sober and he was walking in the light. So he knew. He knew that God wasn't going to destroy his people. And he didn't jump to the offer. Instead, he went to pray. He was selfless, selfless, completely selfless in love. He wasn't selfish or self-centered. If he was looking at himself, he would have said, yeah, Lord, carry on. But for, he, 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 then you forget that you are also the, the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So you would have been destroyed too. That's what we miss. When you point a finger, how many are pointing back to you? God wants to see your heart of love. Are you committed in imitating me? I overlook these people's sin. Before, before Moses came down, God could have, could have destroyed the people if he wanted to. God saw what they were doing. Moses did not. It was God who told Moses, go down. Why? To help them. And Moses knew that. If God wanted to destroy them, he wouldn't have talked to Moses. That's why he consulted Abraham. He, even though he knew Sodom and Gomorrah was past uh, 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 any help. He went to Abraham. He was just looking. Is it possible that I can spare these people? And Abraham was like, God, there must be at least 50 people in that whole city. God says, nope. And he started counting down to 10. And then Abraham was totally dejected. He said, I can't believe it. And he gave up. God needs intercessors. God needs people who will stand in the gap for others. Be there for other people. Don't look at the outward and condemn them. Be there for them. Be sober in your mind. Put on faith, hope, and love. Be the shining light that people see. They mock you today, today tomorrow they run to you for help. Because they see something genuine in you. They're doing what they don't know. But each time they come, you help them and you preach to them. Each time they come, you help them and you preach to them. You are doing your own. And if they are willing, if their heart is touched, the Holy Spirit will change them. And they will be that ripple. They too, they will learn from you and go and do the same. So we all become imitators of God. That's the point. We have to be in relationship with God. Moses was in relationship with God. We have, we must understand what it, it means to be in relationship with God. You know, a lot of people pray, uh, grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, love of God, sweet fellowship of the... What is the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit? It's relationship. Whether we live or die, we live with him. You are permanently in relationship with Jesus. Moses was in relationship. He understood it. He was in constant fellowship with God. He understood God's heart because God revealed his heart to them. See, your people... You see? And he said, no, God, not my people, your people. This, this wasn't even the first time. Because he says, as at first. Verse 18 of that Deuteronomy 9. And I fell down before the Lord as at the first. So this was the second time. So don't say I helped them before. When they come back, I won't help them again. No, you keep help, helping. Your reward is great. You are the shining one. You are the light that they are seeing. That's why they are coming to you. They live in darkness. So when Satan hits them again and again and again on the head, they look around and they see light. They come to you. They forget that they, they, they laughed at you and mocked you last week. They forget because they're in trouble.
When we are in relationship with Jesus, then our heart will love what Jesus loves. We will love what Jesus loves. We will hate what Jesus hates because our hearts are one. Jesus prayed that we must be one with him. Yes, the flesh is a big hindrance. That's why, that's why the flesh must be crucified. On a daily basis. Pick up your cross daily and follow me. We need to understand God's heart. To save those who are undeserving. You and I did not deserve that Jesus should hang on the cross for us. But he did. We luckily have come to the light. So we know this. So don't write others off. I'll say that again. Be in relationship with Jesus. Be in constant fellowship with the Holy Spirit of the Holy God. So that you can understand God's heart to save those who are undeserving. Don't let your flesh make the judgment. Let your heart make the judgment. All right. Let's go back to chapter 15, uh, verse 15 of Deuteronomy. He says, So I turned and came down and, uh, from the mountain, and, and the mountain burned and with fire, and all that, and he had the two tablets in his hand, and he just threw threw it down. See, at that moment, when he saw, verse 16, he says, And I looked, and behold, you had sinned against the Lord your God, and made yourself, made for yourself a molded calf. You had turned aside quickly from the way which the Lord had commanded you. See, and verse 17, then I took the two tablets and threw them out of my two hands and broke them before your eyes. That means at that moment, his heart broke. He couldn't believe what he saw. Nothing mattered. This were the two tablets that God inscribed for him. He just threw it down and fell on his face. It didn't matter whether the tablets were broken because his heart was broken for them. And he fell on his face. Not for the first time. He says, as at first, let our heart break. Let our hearts break. For what breaks God's heart? God's heart was broken. Look at the people I love. Look at the people I care for. Look at the people I redeemed. And they have no clue who I am to them. They are not in relationship with me. I give them food from heaven. They want to go back to Egypt and eat cucumber. So Moses fell down 40 days and 40 nights praying and fasting for stiff necked insubordinate people because of their sin, not because of his own sin. That's a type of Christ. That's why we must be imitators of God. On this platform, we are the living Jesus. So be the living Jesus for your generation. For the people you come across. Just be. Moses says, for I was afraid. His heart broke. I was afraid. What was going to happen? That the wrath of God will fall on them and destroy them. He says, but... The Lord listened to me. Hallelujah. Verse 
God will always listen when you pray for the unsaved. This is Old Testament. Verse 19. But the Lord listened to me at that time also. So again and again, pray for the lost. Pray for the undeserving. Forgive them. As God, God did not appoint us to wrath. That's not his plan. Hell was created for Satan and his, you know, fallen angels. It wasn't created for human beings. Let people know the love of God for them. Stand in the gap for them. Be there for them. This is a command, not how you feel like. Keep your feelings aside. Tell God, Give me your heart. It doesn't matter what people do to you in this world. It does not matter. Your aim is heaven. You are a citizen of heaven. All that you see now will be destroyed. God says, I'll create a new heaven and a new earth. If you love your life, you will lose it. Spend, Marco Sarada. Spend your life for Jesus. He spent his It doesn't matter how many times you fast and pray for people. Just keep doing it. Ask God for the strength. Ask him to restore you and revive you. The more you fast, the more beautiful you look. People think if they don't eat, they are going to collapse. No, when you do it in the name of Jesus, there are enough stories of people that were tormented. For days they didn't eat, they exposed them to cold, they did not catch pneumonia. In this world, I'm not talking about like Daniel that, did, that ate vegetables and, and was more, more informed than the others that ate the king's meal. There are, there are enough, enough testimonies and, and stories in this world. Just let your heart Love the Lord. Moses was there for the children of Israel. Stiff-necked, stubborn, hard-hearted children of Israel. Moses was there for them. Don't write your family people off. Don't write your friends off. Even more, even, sorry, even uh, Aaron in verse 20 that was supposed to know better. Aaron too allowed himself to be dragged down. And Moses say, says in verse 20, And the Lord was very angry with Aaron and would have destroyed him. So I prayed for Aaron also at that time. That's what we are called today to do. Stand in the gap. Be there for one another. Ask yourself, who am, who am I there for today? Who am I there for? As I'm listening to this, who, who can I start to, to, to think of that I can pray for? On purpose. And don't forget... It happens to the best of us. The children of Israel sinned and pulled Aaron down with them. 
It can happen to anybody. Don't say, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm secure. No, you are not. Until the day you are taken to heaven. Seek what is good for yourself and for others on a daily basis. Ask yourself, who can I be there for? You are called into a new way of seeing God's other children through God's eyes. Today is a new leaf in your life that has been turned. A new way of thinking. Start to ask yourself, Lord, give me your eyes. Lord, give me your heart. Ask God to help you do for them as you would do for yourself and as you would do for Jesus when you understand the love of Jesus, when you are in relationship with Jesus. If, if we all all lived that way, like what we just had, Moses, how, think of the beautiful world we will live in. Be sober, put on faith, hope, and love, and be there for one another. Think how beautiful the world will be. Just imagine it. It would be a world where you can truly Rejoice always. Now let's go back and conclude in First Thessalonians. I think we get the gist now. First Thessalonians chapter 5 that we read. Verse 16. Rejoice always. So in such a world, you will rejoice always. A world that is peaceful. A world that one person is there for another. So there's joy and there's, and there's peace. In his presence, there's fullness of joy. At his right hand are pleasures forevermore. So when he says there in 1 Thessalonians 5, 16, rejoice always. That means you have started seeing things with a different eye. Pray without ceasing. Now you know to intercede at all points. Even if you are passing and seeing something, you just release a prayer. Father, cover that child. Lord, protect that child. You, you, you see a near accident. You say, Lord, not on my watch. Protect that person. Pray without ceasing. Verse 18. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ for you. Give thanks. Be, be joyful. Be thankful. Appreciate the world that God created or the earth that God created and put us in. Appreciate things. Do not quench the spirit. You can't quench the spirit because you are in relationship with Jesus. And he says in verse 20, do not despise prophecies. That means you honor prophecies. Why? Because the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Revelation 19 verse 10. Test all things. Verse 21. And hold fast to what is good. Abstain consciously. As he tells you to, to hold fast to what is good. He's telling you in the same way. Push away. Abstain from every form of evil. It's the only way we can survive. It's the only way we can make it. Be conscious. About the things you, you see, the things you do, the things you think, the things you say. Be proactive in your mind. You bless the day as you wake up. And you say, Lord, your goodness and your mercy will follow me today. You, you, you lay down the will of God for your day as you wake up. Because that's what it says there in, in verse 
18. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ for you. That means God wants you to live a good life. And when you see things through his eyes, then everything is good. Because he is perfect. He didn't create any imperfection. But it's because we, we choose to see with the eyes of the world. So we see all the bad that is happening and we don't see any good. So we have to change our mindset. Change the way we look at things. Proactively hold on to what is good and proactively abstain and push away from every form of evil. Now in closing, let us use verses 23 to the end and pray. It says, now may the God of peace himself is not something you can manufacture. He himself will do it for you. He has already done it. We read it earlier when Paul says um, in verse 11, Therefore comfort each other and edify one another just as you also are doing. So when this is your lifestyle, You've, you've surrendered to God. You've given your life to God. You've said, Jesus, take my heart. Show me the way, Holy Spirit. I, I am in relationship with you. I am one with you. And so the prayer is, now, after all is said and done, may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely you see when god does it it's perfect that's why we have to let him do it may he sanctify you completely and may your whole spirit soul and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our lord jesus christ if god doesn't do it for you you can't do it for yourself And I mentioned this recently. A lot of people just live in the body. They think when they die that that's the end. No, you are not just a body. You are not just dust. You are breathing because God put his spirit in you. So Paul is making us clear. He's making it clear here who we are, what we are. We are spirit. We have a soul and we live in a body. Three dimensions. You are not just a body. Some people know just the body and think when they die it's over. Some know the soul and don't know where the soul is going. Maybe the soul is coming back as a butterfly, as a whatever, some beautiful bird or some lion or some eagle. I don't know what they think. But that's all wrong. You are breathing because of the spirit of God. You are first and foremost spirit. You are a child of God. We only see the flesh since the fall. Before Adam and Eve sinned, they were living a normal spirit life. They didn't, they didn't see their nakedness. They didn't see their naked flesh. So, and Paul is praying here. May God himself, this is the work God wants to do for you today. So just open yourself up to him. May the God of peace himself sanctify you completely. Lay it bare before God. Lord, do a work in me that I cannot even think or imagine. I know I cannot help myself. Please, Lord, help me. Sanctify me. Spirit, soul, and body. And preserve me. Go back and read Psalm 16 when, you are, when we finish. Preserve me, O God, for in thee I put my trust. It's only God who can keep you safe. So when you release yourself, when you commit your life into his hands, of course he can do his job. When you are struggling because you've not laid it down yet. 
So we have to pray that prayer. Lord, sanctify me completely and preserve me for the coming of Jesus. Preserve me blameless. Verse 24. He who calls you is faithful. He is not human. He is not a human being that will tell you yesterday and no tomorrow. He is faithful and he will do what he says he will do. He's not yesterday and not tomorrow. And he says, verse 25, brethren, pray for us. So everyone needs prayer. You pray for me, I pray for you. And he says, greet all the brethren with a holy key. So share the love of Christ in holiness. Verse 27, I charge you by the Lord that this epistle be read to all the holy brethren. So you've heard this message. What is your calling? What are you charged with? Spread the good news. Carry it on and tell it to others. I was commanded today to be there for others. So that's what I will be. And that's what I charge you to be. So you carry on the good news. And so may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. So let us pray. Father, we thank you for this word. We bless your name because your word comes with power and authority beyond what our human minds can understand. So Lord, we praise you because you did not appoint us for wrath. Even though we sin, you are looking for people to stand in the gap to pray so that you can forgive. So today, we take on that charge, that challenge, that we will be proactive in love, that we will allow the light of Christ Jesus to shine through us, that we will open our hearts so that you fill our hearts with your kind of love, the love that love loves friends and enemies alike and prays for friends and enemies alike. Lord, we thank you that your word is spirit and they are life. And we take it and we eat it and we breathe it and we bathe in it and we drink it. We just soak ourselves in your word. And we say, Lord, let your word transform us. Let the word of God work wonders in our lives. May our lives be changed for good as we pay attention to the word of God. As we receive the word of God like today as a command. You said it already. That it is not easy to receive uh, uh, um, chastisement. But if we allow ourselves to be trained by it, we will live a life of peace. Jesus, your peace is what we want. You say, my peace I give to you, not like the world gives. We receive your peace right now. And we declare, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, may the love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us. Holy Spirit, we want you to be our friend. We want to be in relationship with you. We want you to be our teacher, our guide, our counselor, our helper, our comforter. Yes, we too will need times of comfort. So Lord, send people to stand in the gap for us as well. As we stand in the gap for others. We bless your name, God the Father, God the Son. God, the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. It's communion time, saints. I hope you were blessed by the word. And I pray that you are preserved, spirit, soul, and body, until the day of Christ Jesus. Let the word work and let the word build you up. And may we find help 
in time of trouble. May we have people pray for us when we need prayers. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Hope you have your elements ready. God never ever lacks ways of dealing with us, helping us. He didn't just leave his word. He left his body and his blood. And he says, if you want to have a peaceful life, do this continuously and remember me. So that's what we are doing. We are remembering Jesus today, all the things he did for us so that we can imitate him. When you read about him, you, you remember because our, our minds are weak. You read and forget, you read and forget. That's why the Bible, you can never exhaust it. The more you read it, the more you want to read it. The, the word opens up who Jesus is to you. So you can learn about him and you can imitate him. So he has different ways. So now, remember the Passover. His friends, his disciples thought it was just another Passover. Remember Jesus had done, you know, he, he ministered for about three years. So he had done Passover before. And they thought, oh, just another one. No, it wasn't just another one. Because everything God does is on point. It's on time. Everything has been pre-planned before the foundation of the world. We may miss, but God doesn't miss it. We miss it. So God comes and rescues us and redeems us. But he never misses. He's always on time. So there they were on that fateful day when they sat down to eat Jesus took the bread and as usual remember he always reveals himself in the communion you start from Genesis to the end God always reveals himself even on the day of resurrection that's how he revealed himself to the uh, Clopas and his friends that were on the way to Emmaus. So here he took bread. He had been preaching, unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you are not part of me. And at that time, a lot of the disciples left. They said, oh, that's a very hard message. Like today, be there for others. It's a hard message. So some will say, mm, not sure about that. That person has hurt me for too long. I'm just, I'm just f supposed to forgive them like that. Yeah, like that, because Jesus forgave you. That's how you will find peace. Otherwise, you wouldn't find peace. You'll be hating them. They don't even know what they did to you. A lot of them are forgotten. So find peace in your heart and forgive. Especially now with the communion. Don't take communion with unforgiveness and hatred in your heart. Don't try it. So search your heart and say, Lord, okay, at your word. I forgive them. Say it a minute and it's gone. God will lift that burden from you. Next time you see that person, it won't hurt you anymore. Just do it God's way. Test and see that the Lord is good. Okay? He doesn't force. He just offers it to you. And when you agree with him, you see how your life will change. You see the peace you will have in your heart. That your belly that used to grind when you see those people. You see that it doesn't bother you anymore. Test, try God's way. So Jesus took the bread on the table and he gave thanks. Be always thankful. We read that in verse 16. In all things give thanks. Jesus gave thanks even though he knew he was going to die. That's an example for you and I to follow. He gave thanks to the Father. So today start to give thanks as we pray together. Father, we thank you. Thank you, God of heaven and earth. Thank you, possessor of heaven and earth. Thank you that you own it all and yet you gave this earth to us to manage until you come. We give you thanks because you give seed to the sower and you give bread to the eater. Thank you that you are in charge of all. 
You have planned it all ahead of time. We are only recipients of your goodness. And so all we can do is to be thankful. In everything, give thanks. So, Father, we give you thanks. By the power of your Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Same thing happened at the end of the dinner, of the supper. Jesus took the cup and gave thanks. And he said to his disciples, this is the cup of my blood. The blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which will be shed for you and for all men, so that sins may be forgiven. So God gave you the plan for forgiveness of sin. He provided the means for your sins to be forgiven. Don't beat yourself up, run to Jesus and stand under the shower of his precious blood. He gave it freely to you and I. He says, this is my blood which will be given for the forgiveness of sin. So, Lord, we thank you. We know we live in the flesh. And it can be difficult at times. But today, at your word, Lord, we lay it down. All our troubles, all our anxieties, all the pains and aches, all the evil from the ungodly, the things they don't even know, the things they throw at, all the things we fight, Lord, we just put them at your feet. All the hearts that hate us, Lord, we choose to love them and forgive them. And Lord, we ask for your peace. We ask for your promotion because when we serve you diligently, you are sure to promote us. You are sure to reward us. So, Lord, we refuse to be at the level of this broken and fallen world. We choose to rise up to your level. Because you are constantly, constantly saying, come up here. So, Lord, we rise up to your level. As you have forgiven us, so we forgive others. As you have prayed for us, Lord, we pray for others. As you have loved us, Lord, we choose to love others. We will be there for others from today because you have been there for us when we did not even know you. Thank you for teaching us. Thank you for allowing us to imitate you. Thank you, especially on this platform, the ministry of the living Jesus. Thank you that we can truly call ourselves the living Jesus. We take on that identity of the living Jesus because we are the only Jesuses that people are going to see in this generation. We take on that identity. We put on faith. We put on hope. We put on love. And we walk in the light and we remain sober because we have received all your goodness, the fullness of your goodness. As we receive it, Lord, we give it away. For your glory, for our benefit, and the benefit of all. Teach us to be patient with all. Teach us to love all. So that your name will be glorified forever and ever. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Dinner is ready. This is the body of Christ. Amen. Lord Jesus for your precious blood the blood of Jesus Amen
Lord. In everything, give thanks. Worship Him. Thank Him. Honor Him. Praise Him. Remember, He did not appoint you for wrath. He has no plan that you should suffer. His plan for you are good and not evil. So be thankful, be joyful that you know him. It's the greatest privilege to know what we are talking about here. Let us pray. Wonderful and everlasting God. Eternal King of Kings, Lord of Lords, God of all gods. In fact, there is no other God. We exalt you. We honor you. We bless your name for the privilege of knowing you. For the privilege of being in relationship with our King Jesus. We thank you, sweet Holy Spirit for the constant fellowship, for leading us to Christ, for revealing him to us, for taking us into the Father's presence. Father, we just thank you for your love. Thank you for sending your word into the earth realm to become man for man. Thank you that you thought of it all. You started it and you finished it. You are faithful in all your ways. Give us an understanding heart so that we can truly know and understand the, the, the things you do for us, the extent of your love for us, which surpasses human understanding. Give us that revelation of who you are deep into our heart. So that we can always choose to be there for others just as you have been there for us. We bless your name. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, saints. Well done. A few announcements as usual before we leave. Weekday services is just God's way of providing for you. You don't eat once a week. You won't be able to survive that way. So Jesus invites you again and again. His word is life. The word that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. So Tuesday... Tuesdays, every Tuesday, 6 p.m. UK time, we have the Lighthouse, the Youth Bible Study. Only for 30 minutes. Come and just refresh in your mind. If you don't have a long time, you know, 30 minutes. One minute with God can change your life, you know, more than you think. The presence of God is what matters. In His presence is fullness of joy. At its right hand are pleasures forevermore. Don't be deceived. What you are looking for out there, God can give you like this. Excuse me. So on the same Tuesday, as well as Wednesdays and Fridays, we have Bible study for everyone for one hour from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. UK time. So... By that time, you know, most people are settled. So, and for one hour, you're giving God one hour is a big deal. Your reward is what matters. He is, he is God. So for your own good, spend time in his presence. However you can, whenever you can. It's for your own good. Thursday night, we have the... MLJ prayer mantle, the, the altar of prayer, intercession, learning to be there for others, learning to pray for others. That's at 9 p.m. every Thursday night for one hour as well. 
And then Friday is double blessing day. We have Bible study at 7 to 8. And then we have the fire hour of prayer from 10 to 11 p.m. Yeah, it's not for the faint hearted. Those who want to be on fire for Jesus. After Bible study from 7 to 8, you come back two hours later at 10. 10 to 11 every Friday. You want God to do like Paul just said. He who called you, he is faithful. He will, he will, you know, sustain you. He will preserve you. He is the one who will do a work in you. So that Friday, most people are just finished for the week. And they want to chill. But God says, if you want to sleep like a baby, come let me massage you a little bit. And yeah, that's what you get by 10 p.m. on Friday night. And your weekend is set on a golden road. Hallelujah. All right, people. I love the presence of God. Yeah. So time is up. I will let you go. You know I love you. But remember that Jesus loves you more. Jesus loves you so tremendously. Your mind cannot even. This mind. Forget it. You can't, you can't understand it. So may the Lord bless you and keep you. May his holy face shine upon you. And may he give you peace beyond understanding. And I release over you the protection of almighty God. And I declare that the blood of Jesus is your refuge. That the light of the Holy Spirit is your shield. And the love of the Father is a permanent firewall of protection around you. Be safe in his presence. Remember, spread the good news. Like and share. Don't keep it to yourself. Be there for others. Mwah. Bye for now.